Now let's have some fun. We're going to take our final artwork and add adjustments to the entire piece. We're going to adjust our colors, blur our backgrounds, and use all our tools. This practical phase video is probably going to be one of my favorites here because we're talking about adjustments and adjustments are awesome because at the end of an illustration, well, I guess I have a love hate relationship with them. I should say that. I love them because after I'm done with my illustration, I can maybe feel like something's lacking and I can make those adjustments to the final image at the very end and it just pulls it all together. Or I can make several iterations of the same type of thing with just a very different look at the very end very quickly. The part I don't like about it is that I sit there and play around with my, just like you would with filters maybe on Instagram or Snapchat, you kind of keep playing around with them. You're like, I know this is a good picture, but I can keep messing with these adjustments and it changes them even more. We're gonna work off of uh, this picture right here. So this is obviously a portrait of me. I did this when I didn't have enough money to hire a photographer to do the portrait that I wanted. <laughs> For my wife and I both, I have my wife's on here as well. I ended up just painting them as lifelike as I could, as I wanted for the style of portrait that I wanted. So, but I think this is the perfect base illustration to, to add some adjustments to, and it should be a lot of fun. So let's jump right into that. All right, so let's open up our adjustments panel, and we're not gonna mess with my wife's face on here because I feel like I'd get in a lot of trouble. So we're just gonna stick with mine. <laughs> I have a whole lot less problem with that, so. One thing that I like to change a lot of times at the very end, especially with like portraits or things like this is a lot of times it's like lighting and color. And that's a lot of times like when you take a photo, you want to make some final edits and things like that, because it's kind of hard to do those sometimes when you're in the middle of painting. Now, I try to do the best I can while I'm painting, but luckily for us, we're working digitally and we get to add those adjustments uh, afterwards, which is kind of cool. You may want to go into like hue, saturation, brightness, and you can kind of toggle those. Again, though, I don't necessarily like to do it right here. The saturation is fine. Maybe even some of the hues, but I don't have as much control over them right here. So I really like to go into more of my curves over here. Make sure it's on gamma, unless you want to adjust specific RGB colors, your red, green, or your blues. I'm just gonna go gamma, but I can look at what you can do here. You can change the brightness there. You'll notice that can make it a little bit more dull. It removes some of the contrast. I can go up here and make it a little bit more vibrant, but check this out. That's a completely different vibe, isn't it? Some older overexposed portraits, which honestly I'm not against. I kind of like that. It feels like kind of old Western-y looking movie posters. Oh, I kind of like that. You can go ahead and get some really unique looks. Could change the colors if I needed to change the more green or red, but I feel like I did pretty good on my colors. I'm gonna probably keep that where it's at. Do I need to add any blurs? No real blurs that I wanna add on this. Maybe though, you wanna add some noise. You have to up the scale a little bit, but you're not gonna see any because it says noise is at 0%. So you have to swing this slider to the right or to the left. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put this noise up here pretty high, then I'm gonna change that scale back down significantly. It was at 0%, so we had to slide it to actually see anything happen. So remember, you have to make that adjustment. I'm liking this because it's starting to feel a little bit more printed. It's kind of a neat little effect that we've been able to do now. Maybe I want to adjust the shape. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. Now it's looking old and printed. That's kind of a neat effect. Let's go over here. What's the bloom? Basically, it will brighten things. So I'm going to change that bloom. That'll just enhance those highlighted spots so it looks like it's just got more of a glow to it. Now that's a little much, but you know what? I can add a little bit. It makes my teeth look whiter, but it also makes my forehead look a little bit bigger, which I don't need. So these ones are actually pretty cool. The other ones that we can technically, if you wanted to do, you could do the, the glitch. We've already talked about that one. I mean, it's cool. I'm not going to say it's not. That's kind of cool. Now it feels like we're kind of mixing retro and new age stuff, but that's not what I do. Maybe this is for like a tech article or something like that. I don't really feel like that's appropriate for what we're doing right now. Chromatic aberration. This one is so much fun to play with at the very end because you can kind of separate those colors. This looks kind of cool. This feels like it's like a misprint. That makes me a little dizzy. That's not what I want. I want to do the perspective again. I like that. And you can move around where that focus is. Let's make sure my eyes are in focus and everything else can feel a little bit blurry. Just a little bit as I slide, drag and slide a little bit. That feels like an old print. 
I really like that. Check that out, those details. That is really cool. Now it's starting to look more like a photo because it's taking away all those little like marks and things that I drew. So let's work with liquefying clone. Now this is less cool because I already felt like I got my proportions correct. But maybe, just maybe, we need to change some things. Maybe my nose is just a little bit too big. Oh, my whole face, not my whole face. Let's change the size down a little bit. There you go, maybe just a little bit bigger, just to get my nose. What about bigger eyes? Let's do that. There we go, that looks a little more creepy. Let's do push, let's change the distortion a little bit, the size a little bit, we can kind of drag things. A little more elf-like, make my beard a little pointier, front teeth down there. So many different things. I could see doing like some caricatures would be really helpful to have a tool like this. And then obviously you have your clone and we can draw certain areas again somewhere else, but I don't really need to play around with that right now. Anyways, I'm not gonna leave you with that image because that's kind of uh, embarrassing there, but I do like this one right here. Let's add the aberration, I should say. Play around with those a little bit and you'll notice that you have lots and lots of ways to create tons of different versions. As soon as you're finished with it, you can change it into so many different options, which is really, really cool. So that's all I have on here. Test out one of your illustrations after you're done, play around with it a little bit and see how you like it. While making our artwork, we've used a lot of tools, but Procreate has even more to offer. In the next course, we're gonna be going through the Actions tab.